guys, what's going on? Hope everyone is doing well, and I am so, so very happy the IBM 5160 saga is finally coming to a close. Now, I believe I've only done one other actual video on this system. However, it has been in the works for around two years now. So, basically, I bought this system uh, Christmas, uh, about Christmas two years ago. And um, I've had uh, plans for upgrading it to about the, uh, about the best IBM 5160 you can really do. Um, and what I wanted to do with it was have dual five and a quarter, full height Tandon 360K floppy drives um, in conjunction with a modern compact flash adapter to actually boot the operating system. Um, now originally, I went the route of the XT IDE uh, from Glitchworks, which appears to be a great product. However, I had numerous issues getting it to work. I was able to boot from one card and one card only, and it was the one that I had in my IBM L40SX portable. Um, now, I'm not entirely sure why that's the only card that was able to boot in it. However, well, that uh, that ship has kind of already sailed, and I ended up just kind of shelving the project for about a year because I was just sick of dealing with it, and frankly, I had other things going on. So um, I finally broke it back out and decided that I was going to go a different route, and I purchased an, another XT IDE. This one, however, was not in kit form. I was a little concerned that the one that I had assembled I may have done something wrong to, even though it would boot to the ROM just fine. And it would, basically what it would do is it would it would start to boot off of the, um, the card. It would say boot sector found and then freeze. Now, that card that I had was not slot eight compatible, um, so I never could try it in slot eight. This new one had built-in slot eight compatibility. Now, when I had it installed the first few times in like the regular slots that aren't slot eight, um, it experienced much the same symptoms. It would it would actually get all the way to um, starting MS DOS, and then it would freeze. And I I piddled around with it for oh. I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, and I decided that I was going to flip the slot 8 compatibility uh, jumper on, stick it in slot 8, and lo and behold, it works perfectly. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's up with that, but it works in that slot, so it's staying in that slot, and that's what we're going with. <laughs> so, yeah, what you see is what we're getting. Um, you'll notice there is two gigabytes of free space on this card. It recognizes the entire thing. I was not even aware that that was possible. Now we are running DOS 622, which is very much the wrong version of DOS for this computer, but it works. So again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I don't plan to, because it seems to run just fine. Um, this adapter actually came with a card a two gigabyte uh, SanDisk card, pre-formatted and pre-installed with MS-DOS. So this thing is literally plug and play. You plug it in, you boot, you're done. And as long as the expansion slots you have seem to be working properly, that seems to be what you have to do, and that's all you have to do, at least from what I've seen. Um, now, every other card I have works in those other expansion slots, so I'm not sure what the deal is, except for these XT IDE adapters. So I assume if I get the slot 8 compatibility module for my other adapter, it'll probably work as well, but I'll probably just keep it for use in another old computer. Um, so yeah, uh, the uh, the journey with the 51... Um, Excuse me. The journey with the 5160 is finally kind of coming to an end here, at least the initial setup part of it. So the machine is 
done for all intents and purposes. However, I don't really have any software for this system. So, here comes the uh, big question here and the ultimate point of this video is I want some input from you guys. What should I run on this? What should I try to do with it? I mean, it's a really cool system, but it's kind of useless without software. And I guess uh, I'm just looking for suggestions. So if you guys have any sort of games that you think I should try out on it, um, send me either a link to where I can grab it or just let me know what you want to see on here and I'll try to uh, I'll try to make that happen. If we want, we can put together like a compilation video of just different software and demos and things running on this system because it is pretty darn cool. Um, I'll also be on the lookout for a AdLib compatible sound card that will work in an 8-bit ISA bus, um, assuming again that those ISA slots are functioning properly. So um, I will be doing my best to try to find a sound card for this thing. I should mention that the uh, the card that I have in here is referenced as the XT IDE Optima and I got that on eBay. They were not cheap but I believe it is just one guy making these and they are pre-assembled and the board layout looks very nice. So I think they're worth it for what they are. Um, if you're particularly into this sort of stuff. So that's just um, something to keep out, uh, keep an eye out for. I would, uh, I would definitely look into that particular card if you are in the need for something like this. They're supposed to be compatible with most PC compatibles. Um, there's a few noted exceptions in the description on the listing. So definitely something to keep an eye out, uh, take a look at when you're considering getting one of these. Um, <clears throat> we'll notice that the, um, <clears throat> the load times on this aren't magically fantastic, but I think that's more of a limitation of the actual system itself and not the adapter. So let's go ahead and go to the one program I have on here, which is PFS Professional Writer. I'll launch that. And I mean, obviously the, uh, the main use of a computer like this, or at least this particular computer with its lovely Model F keyboard, is going to be writing. So, um, yeah, that's why this is the program that's on here. So, yeah, you notice the uh, load times on that weren't like super mega wonderful, but it is faster than loading from a floppy disk. So, I am fine with that, and I was able to replace the aging slightly dodgy 40 megabyte hard drive that was in here with something that is going to be rock solid and reliable. So I'm happy. Um, another thing to note with this is the other slots and the issues I was having may have been due to an issue that I ran into when I first powered the system on. Um, these old uh, IBMs were, let's say, notorious for letting out the magic smoke from a set of tantalum capacitors on the mainboard. This one was no exception. When I first powered it on, it caught fire on my living room floor. And the smell of it was something that I will never forget. Um, I obviously yanked power to it immediately and no real damage was done, but one of the tantalum capacitors on the main board had uh, well and thoroughly mm, charred itself, we'll say. Um, there was very little left of it by the time I was able to get power undone from it. It had already burnt itself to a crisp. So I wasn't sure of the value of the capacitor, so I just removed it and everything seemed to be working okay from there. So, yeah, I don't know. That might be the problem, but from the research I've done, the system seems to, at least it's supposed to be able to run without that capacitor. So, I don't really know on that. It, it could be it could be that that's causing it. It might not be. It may be something else. It may just be a weird limitation of the hardware in the system, or even a system, uh, issue with the system's uh, uh, BIOS ROMs or something. I don't know. 
I'm not the most knowledgeable when it comes to these vintage systems. I'm just now getting into collecting this sort of stuff. So again, if, um, if there's somebody out there that's got any sort of suggestions and or ideas of what might have caused that problem with that adapter, um, yeah, let me know. I would be very much happy to hear any sort of, uh, <laughs> any sort of suggestions or ideas on that. So anyway, yeah, leave anything you got in the uh, comments section, anything that you want to see on this thing running, um, or just, uh, leave a comment talking about some of your experiences with these. I, I love to read through that stuff and I will try to respond to everything that I can. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this little ramble. I know it wasn't much to look at, but, um, and I'm sure the fan noise has been obnoxious as all heck this whole time, but hey, I apologize. I hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. And yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later.